Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to finally another positive match review. Uh, Tottenham recorded their biggest ever Champions League victory last night beating Red Star Belgrade 5-0 in North London and today I'm going to be running through uh, what happened, why it happened and why uh, this could be a really good thing for Tottenham to use to push on and hopefully uh, regain some form domestically. So before I get into the match review, if you do want more content like this, plus interactive live streams, match previews and breaking news videos, please uh, hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. Uh, so to jump straight into things, uh, that was the performance that we've been waiting for, this, the performance we've been needing for quite a while now and thankfully it, it has finally come and we got the result to go with it as well. You know, that's probably the best football we've played all season and I know a lot of people are arguing that maybe the opening half an hour against Bayern Munich was better because it was against a much better opposition but I think for me t the fact that we did have end product tonight and uh, it showed on the scoreline just how good we played I would personally put this as our best performance of the season so far um, you probably mentioned the Palace game as well in that first half but I think for me this was it um, you know, right from the start, there was uh, a lot of you know tenacity in the team. There was high tempo pressing. We were passing the ball around well. We were keeping possession. We were winning it back as soon as we lost it, and it was a, a typical Pochettino's team performance, really. Uh, not what we've become accustomed to seeing in the last eighteen or so months. Um, there was so many players that really, really impressed me last night. And to begin, I was going to run through the uh, the lineup and what I thought about it. Uh, I was delighted as soon as that lineup came out last night, as on my pre-game live stream, that uh, we reverted to the four-two-three-one. You know, the five-three-two didn't work for us at the weekend. The diamond in midfield hasn't really been working. We've heard that from the players. The Pochettino went back to not to basics, but to what he knows works with this team. He went to the four-two-three-one. Um, there are a few surprise inclusions in terms of the personnel that he went with, but obviously at the end of the day, it worked out absolutely perfectly. Uh, Gazaniga in goal, as we were expecting. The back four was Serge Aurier, Davinson Sanchez, Jan Vertonghen and Ben Davis. So for me, I was a bit surprised to see Ben Davis start in this game. Um, the only really time that he's had a chance in the team so far this season, he really disappointed. I think it was against Brighton, but uh, he got his chance last night. As for the two centre-backs, we kind of felt there was going to be a bit of rotation there. It hasn't been working for Toby Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen this season. Um, I was a bit surprised that it was Toby who dropped out rather than Jan. But yeah, Sanchez came in and he had a really good game. And Aurier in right back. Um, I would have preferred to see Kyle Walker-Peters or Juan Foyth starting there. Uh, Walker-Peters not in the squad at all and Foyth came on late on. But uh, moving into the midfield, it was Tangi and Dambele and Musa Sissoko. Uh, a really strong midfield you know expecting good, thi good things from a midfield like that in against the opposition we were playing um, and then it was Eric Lamella Deli Ali, and Hoing Min Son playing behind Harry Kane and again the questions were being asked where's Lucas Moura you know he got only his third league start of the season against Watford last Saturday and again he was put down to the bench but even these questionable decisions in this team from Pochettino they can be justified by the fact that we did go out and we won so convincingly and I suppose that is the, the plight of a manager the, the decisions that you make if they don't, if uh, you know the game goes wrong, that's what will be blamed, and if it goes right, that's what will be praised. Um, and it's it's just the way things are, to be honest. Um, on the bench, then we had a really really strong bench. You know, uh, on the offensive side of things, we had Giovanni Lo Celso back from his injury, Christian Eriksen and Lucas Moura. Defensively, we had Juan Foyth and uh, Eric Dyer, and then Harry Winks from the midfield, and Brandon Austin, the young goalkeeper on the bench, ahead of Michel Vorm. Um, and Every single decision from Pochettino worked out absolutely perfectly because, as I said, we started that game uh, so quickly, so positively, and the commentators on BT were even saying it. Uh, Red Star were expecting to come and play a team out of form, a team with no confidence, a team that just can't get anything, any run of form together. They're no quality uh, lately, and they were completely overwhelmed and they were completely blown off the pitch in that first 15 minutes. Um, the first goal that we got uh, from a corner, Eric Lamella last night, his deliveries were absolutely exceptional, both from open play, uh, as we'll get on to in a second with the second goal, but his his dead ball uh, deliveries as well were absolutely perfect. Only four corners in the whole game, but every single one of them he got spot on, and certainly uh, better than what we've seen from our usual set-piece taker, Christian Eriksen, in recent years. Um, and it was a really good run from Harry Kane to the front post, he just glanced it on. You know, typical Harry Kane goal, a uh, really clever uh, finish, and it got us off to the perfect start, and then the, the fans are... The fans were absolutely exceptional last night, that has to be said, you know, from the first whistle. But then as soon as that happens, you know, the mood lifts, the atmosphere is better. And the, the fans from first minute to last were exceptional. And even Pochettino was talking about it in his uh, post-game interview. And he was saying the way the fans were singing his name, uh, you know, really got him uh, kind of worked up and stuff. And even singing Deli Ali's name at one stage in the game, you know, he's been really poor lately. But it was good for the fans you know, getting that uh, togetherness, I suppose, back. 
Um, moving then on to the second goal, and you know what a goal it was. It lo it looks really simple watching it. I suppose from when it's happening in live play, but the replays show just how good that was. You know the ball played down to the inside right channel, and Eric Lamella making a good run. Um, it was a really clever first touch to you know completely sold the defender, and he's back in his left foot. And even off balance making this cross, he can see Son making that run from the back post. And I thought it was really intelligent from Hoingman Son. He he held his run and he waited until he knew the ball could come in. He didn't make an early run and then have to readjust it or anything. He timed it absolutely perfectly. And from a defensive point of view, that's so difficult to mark because you know when you're when that ball is played down the the right channel and you're at the Red Star Belgrade, they're retreating, they're keeping an eye on what's happening there. They can, the keeper might see someone coming in from the corner of the box and be able to organise the defence to deal with that. But Stun, Sun stayed so wide and so deep that no one was ever going to spot that run, apart from Eric Lamella, who's the only player facing the other direction who can see Sun coming in at the back post. And it was an inch-perfect pass from Eric Lamella. You know, he's off-balance, uh, fallen over, and he just lifted it into the back post. And Sun, it's such a difficult finish. You know, when the ball's bouncing up on him like that, it's so easy to blaze it over the bar or to, you know, completely mishit the ball. But it was the perfect connection, and he fired it into the top corner. And it was a really good goal. And then 16 minutes in, we're 2-0 up. And, you know, again, the atmosphere lifts even more. The fans get even more excited. And the football that we played, it was absolutely exquisite at times. You know, the movement off the ball, the the quick tempo passing. You know, we've been really slow and lackluster in possession for a lot uh, for a lot this season. But I even notice it in those moments where we are just keeping the ball in midfield, kind of slowing things down. It, it was never just one player standing there with his foot in the ball, uh, letting everyone take a breather. There was still two or three of them just giving the ball to one another. Uh, not going anywhere, but just keeping that tempo going, keep the keeping the ball moving, and everything about that performance, for for the most part, was really good. But a bit after that second goal, maybe coming into the the latter stages of the first half, you know, they kind of taken the foot off the gas a bit, and they were, you know, quite relaxed. And I think they they thought perhaps rightly that the the game had been wrapped up and it was all over. But uh, Red Star had chances. Um, they I wouldn't say they played well. I wouldn't say they were uh, looking dangerous at attack. But they managed to find some little spaces in in, in between our midfield and our defence and making some runs in behind the defence, uh, particularly over on that side with Jan Vertonghen and Ben Davis. But um, they had, they did have chances and Gazaniga, he didn't have much to do uh, for the for the rest of the game. But there's about a 10-15 minute spell there where he did have to make a couple of saves and he did well. He made the saves he needed to make. Um, and thankfully then it was a mistake from Red Star that allowed us to get that third and completely kill the game before half time. And it was just... Kind of another uh, characteristic of Pochettino's teams uh, earlier, maybe back at White Hart Lane, that it, it was in that situation. It was one of our holding midfielders who was pressing highest for us and winning the ball back off Marco Marin. And it's it's the, intelligent, the, tong the intelligence that Tongue Ndombele has that he didn't play that obvious ball through to Harry Kane. He, he carried it, he carried it. And Son made an absolutely long bursting run and completely left that right back for dead. Uh, it, just ridiculous pace that, that he actually showed there to get in. Uh, get into that space and Ndombele he held the ball well he timed the pass absolutely perfectly and uh, played into the path of Son and the keeper didn't exactly cover himself in glory in that moment but you know it was a really good finish from Son and we're 3-0 up before half time and that's all we could have asked for really you know I, I was saying it it's not it's not the fact that we won that game or the fact that we won the game by five goals it's the manner in which we did it you know from start to finish the football the, the effort, the intensity, absolutely everything was exactly, exactly what we've been asking for from this team. Um, and it's um, it, for, me, for me, it's not surprising that it was a team that was in this 4-2-3-1 formation because that's the, as I've been saying, the one, the formation that's gotten this team to the stage we're at now where we expect to see performances like this on a weekly basis. Um, and it is just, I, I suppose, a bit unfortunate that our next game is away to the best team in the country at the moment. So it will be hard to kind of keep that momentum going. But... You can also look at it as this is the best time for us to go and play Liverpool because we do have this really good performance, uh, this really good uh, win behind us. And we do have four days to rest before we go out and play them on Sunday. So I think the same 11 would be uh, the ideal the ideal way to start that match. And then, you know, moving into the second half, Red Star didn't really offer much. We didn't, you know, we didn't go all out and try and uh, rack up the scoreline as much as possible. We just managed the game really well, which is another thing we've been lacking quite a bit this season. And it looked as though it might fall in that way again when Red Star did have that spell in the first half. But in the second, we managed the game absolutely superbly. And, you know, there's I, I'm trying to find different things to maybe kind of question, say, oh, maybe this could have been better or there's room for improvement here. But I thought everything about that performance last night was abs absolutely unbelievable. And it's it's been a while since we've been able to say that about Tottenham. Um, then obviously moving on to the fourth goal, it was great to see Lamella uh, getting on the score sheet. 
Uh, again, it was Serge Aurier who, who played really well down the right-hand side and he played a, a fantastic ball into Eric Lamella on the penalty spot. And obviously you have to ask questions of the Red Star defence. I mean, he's there 12 yards out from goal in the centre of the box and he's the time to take a touch uh, behind him, turn and bury it in the top corner. So the defence uh, absolutely all over the place there. But it was a really good touch and finish from Lamella who, who has added this end product to his game this season. You know, got an assist for Son and getting himself in the score sheet as well. Uh, he had a few other chances. There was one one cross from Harry Kane at one side and he's down the left hand side and on his left foot he whipped it in Lamella standing in between two defenders and Harry Kane absolutely amazing ball with his left foot he whipped it in with pace with power with accuracy and Lamella perhaps should have done a bit better but that's the kind of quality that we haven't been seeing from this team for quite a while and it was back in abundance last night and you know as for the fifth goal uh, just amazing from Harry Kane I mean he he messed up the opportunity, or it looked as though he'd mess up that opportunity with his first touch when the ball was played through to him. He tried to take a touch to bring him back in onto his right foot, but he, he completely miscontrolled the ball and it allowed that Red Star Belgrade defence to get back. And he's standing there, he's options, you know, a few players uh, making runs into the box and he's just, from a standing start, puts it through the defender's legs right into the far bottom corner. And it was a really, really good finish and a great way to round off a game that, you know, showed us just why we expect so much from this team because we know that they can deliver it. And of course, we were against a weak opposition. You know, no one's saying that Red Star are the best team in the world. There's we. It was a team that you would expect us to beat, and they you know they've never picked up a point away from home in the Champions League. They are a, probably a Europa League team who just overachieved last year with teams like Partizan Belgrade in Serbia, uh, not really at their best over the last couple of years. But at the end of the day, it is a Champions League game, and you have to acknowledge there is going to be a certain element of difficulty in every Champions League game you play, and we completely nullified the threat that Red Star Belgrade have had for the for the most part of that game and we capitalised on their mistakes like that third goal for Marco Marin the, the lack, uh, lackluster defending for the fourth goal when Lamella scored we took advantage of everything that was presented to us and we've been the team on the other side of that for this season but it was great to see us you know so convincingly winning a game convincingly winning a game and hopefully we can go out against Liverpool on Sunday and perform similarly I mean I'm not going to ask for a 5-0 victory in that one but you no know, if we play similar football there's no saying that we can't get something off them because you know we've kind of been a bogey team for them since Jurgen Klopp came in and I know it doesn't feel like it because we do have some really bad results against them at times but you know I think we haven't lost at Anfield for three years now two or three years maybe we lost last year but hadn't for a couple of years before that and obviously we had a good result against them at Wembley a couple of years ago as well so there's no saying that we can't get something out of this game, but we need to take everything from last night into this game on Sunday. And, you know, there, there, was, there could be a result there for us. Um, now, in terms of my player rating video, I'm going to be recording that now in a second. I'll be releasing that in the morning. Uh, so make sure you subscribe if you want to uh, get that player ratings video. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below your thoughts on everything that happened last night, from the, the line to the performance to the goals, absolutely everything. Um, as always, thanks for watching.